What's up, Atlanta? Hope you guys survived Halloween. Hope you guys are out of your sugar comas. Hope you didn't have any Halloween nightmares. I had a few nightmares, Joe, from uh, from that game up in Toronto when we were going to win that trophy that we pretended like we cared about. But we're not going to... We didn't really care about that one, that Supporter Shield thing. I'm Blake, the March Man. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's ATL this United. This is the playoff version of ATL Joe. Let's get some gold. Does that change from your original version at all? Yeah. Cool. Let's do this thing. Hello again, my wonderful AT aliens. Time to wake up, get out of your drag. It's playoff season. Really? I mean, it's November. It's getting colder outside. It's harder to wake up, actually. Like, you know, it's dark in the morning and your alarm's going off, but you've snoozed it five times. And you keep waking up from that dream where Atlanta lifts a trophy, but then you realize that that's just your alarm telling you you have to wake up and go to work. Yeah, and that's all behind us, Blake. I don't want to think about the regular season. Now it's a whole new world. We've got the playoffs right in front of us. Our slate is wiped clean. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. All that matters is what happens now and tomorrow. Okay, I can deal with that. we got a lot of news, so we're going to keep you guys up to date, as always, on everything going on in Atlanta. We're also going to do our brief but short plug. Five stars, five stripes. Don't forget about us. We'd appreciate it if you guys want to rate us. Chomp and stomp. Chomp, chomp, chomp. This stomp, Saturday. Stomp, stomp, stomp. In Cabbage Town. What can be better than a bluegrass festival, Joe? A bluegrass festival with a chili competition. Blake, and uh, this is special to me. Yeah. Like, I hear you entered a chili to be tasted at the competition. Yeah. So, if any guys would like to meet me out in the wild, I will be. I'm on a team called Four Guys Cooking Chili, and we are all dressing up like uh, Guy Fieri uh, in our. That should our, be our easy chili. to spot you from, our, from a distance. Our chili is going to be very flavorful. Flavor, flavorful. We're gonna take you to Flavor Town. Don't hurt yourself, kid. It's gonna be. There's gonna be a lot of chili. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of bluegrass, and it's gonna be a great. It's gonna be a great Saturday. I'm excited about it. So you guys come out, Cabbage Town this Saturday should be fun. Uh, what else we got? Get out and vote, Joe. Yeah, everyone should get out and vote. I haven't done it myself yet, but early voting is is going on like crazy around Atlanta. Basically, everyone I know besides myself has already voted. So I I pledge to you, my listeners and my friends. I will vote by next Tuesday. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you guys vote for. Just get out there. It's it's time to exercise our rights Tuesday, November the 6th. I'm going to vote for Joseph Martinez. Yeah, because he did win the MLS Golden Boot for 2018. So, claps for Joseph Martinez. Oh, uh, Joseph Martinez. Golden Boot winner. Score us goals in the playoffs. Score some more goals so we can win. Go, Joseph Martinez. We only win when you score goals, except for last week. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Go, Joseph Martinez. It is pretty amazing what he's done. And I'm not sure if that song is going to catch on for the playoffs, but we can try it. 50 goals over his two seasons with us. He's hit the 50 mark. That's the most ever in the MLS over a two-season mark. Joseph, we need you to step it up in the playoffs, but we're not going to forget about where we'd be without you which is not a very bright outlook so thank you joseph uh miggy and joseph also up for mls mvp that'll be announced i believe after the season is concluded atlanta united has four players up for season ending awards which is the most of any team but would you expect any less from this wonderful wonderful organization that we have and of course uh our departing hero and coach tata is up for manager of the year don't do it tata it's not too late. You can still say that you were kidding and come back. We'll if that's the you. case, we'll we'll give a manager of the year if he comes back. But if not, win us a trophy and, and sail away. Parkhurst is up for defender of the year. Apparently they missed the Toronto game. 
according to 538, which is the statistical analytics site that people trust for everything from politics to science and health to economics, and last but not least, sports. And uh, they've become a very accurate prediction site. They're actually giving us an equal shot to win the MLS Cup going to the playoffs 23%. They also correctly predicted the New York Red Bulls would win the Sporter Shield going into last week. So Yeah, but Blake, let me let me bring you back. I'm not there. getting way into stats. I'm just saying we have a even shot with the other top team, the Red Bulls. To win this thing. But you said they correctly predicted. That's tr- true. They correctly predicted them the week before going into the last game of the season where almost the majority of the season prior to that Toronto matchup, they had Atlanta United favored to win the Supporters' Shield. And at times it was like a, a blowout 70%. So it's yeah, statistics. It's you know, stats. It's just, just percentage points that they throw up there. So Yeah, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, they once they saw that they were playing Trash Lando – and we had to go to Toronto, the defending champs. They probably just realized, ah, we'll throw the stats out the window. This doesn't look good for Atlanta. Well, Blake, I don't want to talk about any of those more of the supporter shield woes because that hurts me. But can you tell me what else is hurting? Injury report. Injury. Injury. Injury report. Once again, we have injuries, and uh, not necessarily terrible news anywhere. Miggy is actually back to full practice with the team. This has been since Wednesday. It's looking very promising for Sunday. Again, we are going to play Sunday in New York City. It's the first of a two-legged tie. We're going to explain a little bit about what that means later, but it's our first playoff game this season. NYCFC off the win against Philly. Miggy looks like he's going to be back for Sunday against NYCFC. If he doesn't start, he's probably going to get 45 minutes in the second half, depending on how things go. Tito, Garza, both fully back. I, I'm not even going to mention them. I don't see any injury setbacks with either one of them. Garza actually played 65 minutes. He came in for an injured Chris McCann, which is my next point. He left a game with an injury. Nothing's been released as in terms of official news, but I think Garza is our starter for the playoffs. If something happens to Garza... We have Bello, who is actually day-to-day with a slight injury. No status update on them right now, but Bello and Carlton both didn't travel to Toronto. I expect to see Bello and Carlton travel with the team up to New York for you, Sunday's match. You think they're going to make that playoff roster? I think they're going to make the playoff roster. I think that they could be crucial subs, or if we get in a pinch, possibly crucial starters. So no real other news in terms of injuries. You will see more as Sunday comes around how Tata wants to manage because, again, we do have two games against the same opponent, one in New York and one in Atlanta. The aggregate score is going to decide who advances. Tata might decide to play, okay, let's let this guy a little more rest. You never know. Tata has fooled us a lot of times with his lineups. But enough with injuries. That's the outlook we have right now rolling into this Friday Let's recap this unfortunate match that uh, was a nightmare in Toronto. What an embarrassment it was. Everyone going in with high hopes of winning the Supporters' Shield in Toronto. Toronto had different opinion on that. They did not want to lose that record in front of their home fans. And they've got a pretty impressive crowd, all, all being said, throughout the, the league. So that was really rough. That was um that was really painful. It every time I want this team and this club to say, "Hey, we're not going to be." Everyone hates it in Atlanta. Another Atlanta sports team. We're not going to choke when it matters most. Well, I'm just going to ignore this choke job because this was a choke job. We had the supporter shield locked up. We dropped some points earlier in the season where we shouldn't have. It came back to haunt us. We ended up with a tough decision day matchup. And we didn't really show up. We lose 4-1. to one. We controlled our own destiny. We can't complain. We can't, we can't blame anyone else. We, we, we can blame anyone else. I mean, we can blame VAR. We can blame the refs. We can blame the schedule. We can blame the announcement of Tata's departure. But those are all pretty lame excuses. We had a trophy, the first ever trophy in our club's history that we had the chance to win. And we laid an egg. And I'm disappointed. And this, it was a This is for sure the worst game we, fa- we played all season long, dating 
all the way back to the very first game of the season when we lost 4 nothing to Houston. That was preseason. I'd like to <laughs> – you've said that all year, but, Blake, it really was the first game of the, of the year. And I would like to put them head-to-head next to each other, and it's really tough to tell which game we played worse in. At least in that very first game against Houston, we came out in the second half and didn't let them score again. We went down 4 nothing and then held stagnant, where this game it was just constant, just – mind-boggling, head-scratching plays, poor passing, really bad decision-making, nobody really taking an aggressive approach. There was a couple of plays on all uh, little key moments here and there that players showed spurts uh, of being smart. Nagby played uh, a couple solid plays. Gressel, with that rocket off the post, had a couple of great leading passes, but doing it all themselves and not much help around them. And as a team, it was not a cohesive unit. Yeah, this game could have gone a couple different ways if we had had focus early on. Jeff Lorenowitz, I'm going to call you out, man. You're old enough to get called out. You might even be getting old enough to be on Social Security pretty soon. How old is Jeff? He's pushing 60. Pushing 60. Nah. Jeff Lorenowitz, I- I'm sorry, Larry. We're not trying to talk trash. But that first pass that led to the first Toronto goal was absolutely horrendous. He passes it right in between the center back and the left back. Neither player makes a move for the ball. We just stand and watch. Well, it was really tough for them to make a move for the ball when the ball was 10 yards away from either option, yeah. and it was within three yards of the attacking player on Toronto. Yeah, it was already a back pass. They get a little deflection. Ball goes in. Early on, we're down one nothing. You know, we, we had some chances, like you said. Joseph hits the post. Gressel hits the crossbar. We have a controversial goal called back with VAR, but Toronto also had a goal called back with VAR. I don't think we can use that as an excuse. We gave up four goals, and we could have given up five. <laughs> so I, we're defensively in shambles, and we came out with the defensive lineup. So I almost wonder if trying to be defensive, and we can maybe talk about it tactically a little bit later, but I've seen a lot on social media people were critical of Tata's lineup this match. This past match against Toronto was, I was a very defensive lineup. I was a critical one. I did not like seeing Parkhurst, Lerinowitz, and McCann in the lineup all at the same time, right in that one little corner of the field. It really showed. This is before McCann got hurt, and it led to the first goal. And it was just a bunch of slow old guys, although Parkhurst is one of my favorite players on the team, and I think he always makes good decisions. Just pairing them up next to McCann and Lerinowitz, I did not like that duo. And we're it's going to help us a lot that McCann is hurt now. I'm sorry to say it's going to help us with someone hurt, but the fact that we're going to be forced to start Garza, who I think is our choice left back to begin with. And yeah, the whole thing is we didn't have Miguel Amaron during this whole game. Miggy is such a big, big factor for us, and he is he pulls the strings all across the field. He is the guy that goes box to box, even though he plays at attacking midfield. And it showed this game that we missed him. I think we need to talk about a few more things. Barco, we've talked about him a lot negatively on the show. This is all I'm going to say about it, is this guy continues to be passive in the final attacking third. He, he, he's not shooting. He's not much of a threat on offense. Our excellent, excellent producer, Britt, pulled some stats on this guy. He's made 10, his 10 past appearances. He has zero shots on goal. He only has one assist. For a guy that's making more money than Joseph Martinez, and I'll stop saying that, but for a guy that is paid at the top of our team and is expected to perform at the top of our team, regardless of age, we really need this guy to step up in the playoffs. He's got to do better. Got yeah, to do better. He does. And But overall, Toronto outplayed us. It was one of the worst games we've seen Atlanta play all year. You know, Toronto, Toronto came out with a game plan and executed against a team that looked like they collapsed under pressure. Atlanta United just looked like they had they were holding the weight of the supporter shield on their back and it just crumbled them down to their knees. So, Blake, that is past us. I said it earlier in the episode. We're in the playoffs now and we have a clean slate. Wipe it clean. It only matters from here on out. What do you do? And Atlanta throughout the past season They've always bounced back from a loss with a win outside of the New England game where they drew. And a draw in the playoffs on the road is a good, good stat to have. So in the in the future, in the preview, we're going to give you a little bit of a slate about the playoffs. But before that, Blake, I need a beer. Beer of the week! Every week, 
even when we lose the supporter shield. Probably even more so when we lose. That it's might be when I Halloween, shotgun. and I overdosed on candy. I watched a really scary movie. Have you ever seen the It movie? I've seen the old one, not the new I one. I saw the new one. I, I was jumping all over my house. How was that new one? That was terrifying. We watched Scream last night. Anyways. They're original. We got a beer. Had one trick-or-treater. I was so disappointed in my neighborhood. I, I bought a ton of candy. I might just have to bring you like a big bag of candy because... I don't know what to do with it. I literally just said I OD'd on candy. I don't want any more candy. I'll, wild, give, you, I'll give you some candy. Wild Leap Brewing. We're going to take a wild leap and not worry about the support shield anymore because we didn't we didn't really care about her. This beer is called Chance IPA. And what a good beer for the playoffs because it is a, it's a crapshoot. It's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. I'm going to spike this one in for you guys. Out of LaGrange, Georgia. I Great hope you brewery. join me in drinking a beer. A-T-L. And we do have a chance. So we're going to drink this Chance IPA to give us a better chance. Statistics show if you consume more chances, then you have a better chance of winning, right? If you consume more chances, so that yeah, like you're if you taking drink, on chances. Yeah, if you drink more of these beers, then we have a better chance of advancing in the playoffs. If our fans drink more beer, then our team has a higher chance of winning the playoffs. So get out. Drink lovely. Oh, oh, caveat. It's got to be Atlanta based beer. Or, if or, our fans, or Georgia. This is LaGrange. Okay. I'll take that. Wild Leap. If our fans drink Georgia based beers before the game and every day leading up to the game, then Atlanta's got a higher chance at winning that game. That is statistically proven. I looked it up on 539. It's a website that's sort of like 538, but it's run by me. It's um, statistics about beer drinking to winning. Just, I, just launched it. My name is ATL Joe, and I approve that message. This is a great beer. We've said enough about it. You guys check out Wild Leap if you haven't. It's time. It's time to get ready. Playoffs. We're talking about the playoffs. Let's preview this. That's right, Blake. Now wipe that frown off your face. It's playoff time. That was a cheesy line. Hey, hey, hey. Let me get you guys ready for the playoffs. Say, if- turn that frown upside down. That's a yeah, cheesy that, line. That's a cheesy you line. You don't like it? Turn that frown upside down. Yeah. I mean, I do. If you look at a shark and you point them straight up in the air, they're constantly frowning. They've always got a frown on your face. So if you just take that shark and flip them upside down, it looks like he's smiling. That's genius, but I'm confused. We spent a whole year, Joe, trying to win our first trophy. We had it in our sights. Just like, I'm not even going to mention the NFL team in Atlanta that had that did. Super Bowl in their sights. And we, <coughs> we choked. Easy there, Blake. We choked. Slow down, muchacho. We choked. This is a whole new sport. This is football. I'm not over it. I'm not over it. I'm really not. And I'm going to just say that. I am excited about the playoffs. We got another chance at a trophy. But before we go on previewing the playoffs... I just had to get that out there. I'm not over it. That one really hurt. I was really upset. The shield looked cool. It's like a shield. We could have like we could have hammered it home with the spike or something cool. Yeah, we could have done that. But now, are you done moaning and groaning? Now the Red Bulls have it, and they're just gonna probably throw like energy drinks at it or something. The Red Bulls have won the supporter shield multiple times in the past. It's not served them well in the playoffs. They haven't gone on to win. Probably just like douse it in Red Bull and all those stupid Red Bull flavors. They probably just pour it all over the shield. That's not what we would have done with it. Then it'd be really sticky. And you don't want that shield anyways if it's all sticky. We would have treated it so nice. We would have polished it and spiked it home. And Oh, well. Okay. I'm done. Let's talk playoffs. Okay. Well, first off, I want to break down the playoff format. To those of you who didn't pay attention last year or stopped watching after we got knocked out in the very first round. Me. (laughs) <laughs> so it goes to like a wild card type of format where it's a play in game. And we all saw New York city dominate Philadelphia last night. It was a one off. They advance and Atlanta United is the two seed New York, New York Red Bull is the one seed. They both get a first round by New York being the one seed faces the lowest seed coming out of the first game. Correct. Atlanta being the two seed faces the highest seed. Which is NYCFC, thus our matchup. New York City's the third seed. They win. We play them. And New York Red Bull faces the four or five seed that wins in tonight's game that we are currently watching. And so what I would say about the playoffs is the most important thing is that we explain 
this round, our two-legged tie, and what that means. And if you guys know, uh, Joe and I do frequently browse the Atlanta United subreddit. Great source of information. Great community for Atlanta United fans. Wonderful listeners, too. Shout out to all my ATL United Reddit fans. And we got a great, great post. Aggregate scoring for dummies, because I'm a huge fan of the For Dummies book series. It's very simple. Aggregate, when we say the word aggregate, that's going to refer to the score of two separate matches, also known as legs. Each competing team is going to host one of the two legs, so we each get a home game, making it fair, supposedly. Whoever scores the most combined advances. Very simple, right? But here's a catch. There's a tiebreaker. Throw a wrench in there. It is called the away goals rule. The way soccer in Europe and all across the world sees it is that it is more difficult to score on the road than at home. Therefore, if we have a situation of a tiebreaker, the immediate tiebreaker is whoever has more away goals. So if we win 3-2 to two in New York on Sunday and then a week later we lose 2-1, two to one. Two to one, we scored more away goals, so we advance. If we have the exact same amount of away goals both games, then it goes into traditional overtime, extra time, and if extra time doesn't produce a winner, another PK shootout like we had against Columbus. And Blake, let me throw one more wrench into this just so you guys are prepared because this happens every single playoff year. Just keep going back in history and looking at it. There's always a case where a team ties away one-to-one, and then they come home and they tie that same team two-to-two. Well, that's where the away tie, away goals tiebreaker goes into play, and it's all like, what? The, we scored the same amount of aggregate goals. Well, no, there was a one-to-one tie, a two-to-two tie. So the away team that scored two goals advances without overtime. That's one of my least favorite parts about the away goal tiebreaker. I love the idea of going to the playoffs and each team getting an equal shot in their home stadium. Unfortunately, we're going to a baseball field, so I don't know if that's an equal shot. Second point I'm going to make, Away goal is going to be crucial as we preview this game against New York City because if we can even get one away goal, that allows us at home to play with a lot more freedom, a lot more comfort, hopefully play open attacking football that we like to play. And I just I just would hate to go up there and not get a goal this Sunday due to this rule because if they score anything, we're going to have to overcome that and they'll have a tiebreaker if they only get one goal at Mercedes-Benz. So I think we need at least one away goal to really come out of this tie against New York City with a good shot at advancing. Get your goal. Go for the win. If you're winning with 75 minutes left, hold on to that win. Maybe park the bus. So that's a a bit of a strategy we can talk about in a minute. But let's give a little bit of a preview of our opponent. This was my choice opponent when I looked at the lineup of who we could play. Yeah, Columbus and Philly would be nice to play, but... I threw them out as the team that was, if they had won, they most likely were going to go face New York anyways. So I like that we're playing New York City FC. We played them twice this year. We tied them at our place, tied them at their place. Now, if that were the playoff scenario, it was a 2-2-1-1 situation. New York would have went on with away goals. But New York City has been struggling as of late. In their past 10 games, they've got two wins, five losses, and three draws. Not a solid record, and they came on with a, a win right before the, the playoffs. They beat Philadelphia, who they just beat again. Yeah, Their other win was against the lowly Chicago. They Their losses were against D.C. United, a playoff team, Minnesota, a bad team, New England, a team that was in shambles at the end of the season, Columbus, a team that really didn't know their their own selves, and then Philadelphia, they they lost to them a couple weeks before they beat them. So all over the place. While they went on and tied Montreal, and they tied New York Red Bull, that was actually a big game in their house. They were able to tie New York after going down two men. So that was a big one. But they also tied D.C. This is a team that's kind of struggling coming in. Although Atlanta's looking at their one game that they lost, D.C.'s looking – or. New York is looking at the the games that they just won to maybe try to build momentum, but they haven't done well since entering their new head coach. Yeah, I I think a couple things that you touched on are relevant. One is form kind of goes out the window in playoffs. And I agree with you to some extent, but they were missing players like the legendary David Villa, 
Herrera was out. Medina missed big chunks of playing time during that stretch of games you talked about. They're all back. They're all healthy. I watched them play Philly on Halloween night, and they looked good, man. They looked really good on that tight, compact field that they play on. They play a very direct style. David Villa is as scary as it gets, and as slow as our defense has been, this one scares me, and and this is a tough, tough place to play. I, I did not want this game simply for the stadium, so I'm going to disagree with you there. Yeah, like, no, you make a good point there. It's a there. tough place to play. And you make a really good point. They they have held down their home turf for majority of the season. We were actually the anomaly coming in there. We tied them when we went to New York City, and we drew them in a very tight tough contest so that was one to look at we've already got experience at pulling out a result in new york city but this is a team that knows how to defend their own stadium they play on these tight quarters which is it's much smaller than the regular fields so we're gonna have to come with a a strong game plan against new york city and you did mention that they are getting healthy and what a good time to get healthy it's trouble atlanta united looking like we're getting healthy at the right time with the right players that being Greg Garza, who we've truly missed. And I, we've kind of filled in well for him. But I love seeing Garza running up and down that left side. And then the number one guy that we need healthy is Miguel Almiron. we got to have Miggy healthy. And Without it, a doubt. He's, he's back to full training. He looks like he's going to be starting. And, and if he does, he's going to be such a crucial point. Can he pull the strings like he always does and get us some goals and create attacking chances. I mean, I agree with you. You got to look at the whole body of work, but you also have to look at the timing and the form of the situation. The situation is New York's got a lot of momentum. Look, they got through Philly. So we got more rest, but they got more momentum. They're playing in front of their home crowd again. Their home crowd, they kind of tailed off. They had some injuries, but their home crowd saw that performance. They're going to be hyped. You did mention their home crowd, and they had a very poor sh- turning out of on that game day. I, I don't know what the stats were, but looking in the stadium, it was very bare, very empty. So, yeah, they're, they're going to have fans there supporting, but I know we're going to have a lot of traveling fans there too. We should. I mean, they've only lost one home game all season long. All season long, they only lost one home game. And and this you, is a tough, tough place to play. Do you play. Ha- have how many draws they have? Because I they, know we were one of those. They had four draws. Uh, you know, and, and that is a situation where they had the best home record in the MLS. Now, this is a time for Atlanta United. If you throw out that Toronto game, because I hate talking about it, but we've been the best road team. And it, it, it caught up to us at the very end against Toronto. But we can go to teams and, and get points. And I'll tell you one way uh, that New York is susceptible. It's on their back line. Yeah. They've got not the strongest defense in the league. It's it's one of the lower defenses in the league. They make up for it with a very strong, quick-hitting attack and very direct style on their short pitch and know how to play in those tight quarters. But if we can use our speed and use good cuts and good passing, we can get break through that back line. And I'm only telling you, Joseph Martinez is an inch away from getting another hat trick. He he needs to put the ball in the back of the net on his chances. But we've seen him miss a couple chances the past couple of games. That trend is not going to stand. It's not going to keep staying that way. Yeah, like I said, I think we got to go out. We got to get a goal this game. A goal is crucial. Just a 1-1 draw, even a 2-1 New York win would feel like a win coming back home, knowing we have that away goal and knowing that a week later we play back in the bins in front of our fans on our turf, playing at our speed on a full length, full width pitch. And I'm going to I'm going to harp on this. We've talked about it before. I do not think that their home atmosphere is what has given them the best home record in the MLS. It's just a fact. Yankee Stadium is a baseball field. They modify it to make it a soccer field. The dimensions are not correct. There, It is not long enough. It's not wide enough. It is the smallest field in the MLS. They're used to playing on it. It's an unfair advantage. And shame on the MLS for allowing this to continue. And I, I, I'm, I'm just saying what the rest of the league is thinking there was a hilarious tweet hilarious tweet i rarely get on twitter but when i do it's for hilarious tweets <laughs> philadelphia's official twitter said best halloween costume goes to new york city's yankee stadium for pretending to be a soccer field that's a good one that is funny well now that, that is funny we know we have to play on this field blake let's break it down a little further with tata's tactics And 
And it's a, it's a very important time in our career as Atlanta United fans. And we want to see the best of the best come out. And, Blake, I'm going to go straight out and say I need Tata Martino to put out his choice lineup. Put out our best 11 out there. And I'm going to go ahead and break it down from top to bottom. Martinez up top. I want to see Gresselmania playing on that right wing, giving good service with Tito on the left. Miggy's going to be back, coming full guns blazing as that cam, playing on a little bit of a left side attacking mid. Nagby up there as an attacking box-to-box midfielder. And we're going to have Remedy, our wonderful midseason addition, playing a center defensive midfield role while he's flanked by Greg Garza and Escobar as our wingbacks. Garza's back, finally. And then our Rock and Rock in the middle with LGP and Parky. Got to play better together. Got to have a better performance. And then all lies with the wall, Brad Guzan. Can he get another shutout on the board? Can Guz get another clean sheet? I like that you came straight out with your lineup, because now we can really talk tactically about how I think we should go about this game, how you think we should go about this game. It's starting to hit me, and I know I've been a downer this episode, but we're going to have to come up with a a new coach for our tactical section. Tata, you owe us something, though. You've said you're leaving. You've distracted the team at the most pivotal moment of our season. You've kind of made this about you, and I know Tata listens, and so I'm going to just call him out because I feel strongly about this. I think the announcement should have waited until the season was complete. I think that would have been very respectful to the club that you helped start and to the club that employed you with lots and lots of money for the last two years. I think it would have been respectful to wait till the playoffs were over to announce you're leaving. But to each their own, I understand there was a lot of rumors you wanted to just put it to bed. But the lineup we came out with against Toronto was weak. Yeah, and Tata, I think, has to prove a point to us and his fans. If you followed him throughout his career, he's got to make a statement because... He left Argentina after he got second in the World Cup. He got second in the Copa America twice. He left Barcelona after he constantly finished second place in their mm-hmm. quote unquote supporter shield. He's race. good at getting second. He yeah, everywhere he's been, he finishes second place. Well, this is a chance for him to leave on top and finish first. So let's continue tactically. So let's talk about What we need, and I agree with you, we got to come out guns blazing. We need an away goal. We don't need to play passive. Larry, after that performance, after that pass to open the game, I think he he has to be dropped. He has to be dropped from the starting 11. You said that. I think Remedy is better at that center defensive mid. Uh, The other guy I have on the bench that is our controversial player is Ezekiel Barco. I think you got to leave him on the bench, too. We mentioned it earlier. He does not deserve to be in that starting lineup. I have no problem with bringing him in if we need to later in the game, if someone gets hurt or if there's some sort of change of pace, someone's tired. Yeah, bring him in, see what he can do. But honestly, my first off the bench has been the guy who's been the very first guy off the bench almost all season long, Kevin Kratz. And a guy we haven't seen a free kick goal from him in a long time, but he's the type of guy I might want to bring in late in the game just in case we get a free kick opportunity. Yeah, how sweet would a Kratz Kratz fever playoff goal be? That would be clutch. We would really, we would really appreciate that, Kevin, if you're listening. Uh, yeah, no, and I agree. If Miggy even has half of a leg, he needs to play. He's got to start. We need this guy. Miggy is the engine that powers our entire team. Joseph, Joseph's like, he thrives off of Miguel. The synergy is not there with Miguel gone. Miguel's out of the lineup. We don't see the same Joseph Martinez. I think Joseph, he's a, he's a confident striker. He's a 100% confident striker. We've seen it. When he gets hot, he gets scorching hot. But he's gotten a little, he's gotten a little cold. It was cold up in Toronto. It's going to be cold in New York. He really needs Miggy to come back, bring that joy back to his play. They have a synergy. They understand each other. And I think we might see a Miggy to Joseph assist this game, which would be tremendous. I can't harp on how important getting an away goal is. But honestly, Gressel, to me, looks like our second biggest goal threat. And who would have thought we would have said that at the beginning of the season? But if there's a player that I think is going to get on the scoreboard right now besides Joseph... It's actually Gresselmania. That's how good he's been at that Swiss Army knife, German Army knife, however you want to say it. He's he's the guy that I look in our lineup. You can't drop him. 
And he's there with assists. He's there with goals. If someone's going to have a hand in a goal or score a goal, I bet you Gressel's name is attached to it. And that's why I'd like to see him push more up the field on that on that right wing. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about tactically because we've mentioned that small field and how we got to play to that small field. Well, New York City, we already mentioned, plays a very direct style. And they go straight at you, straight up and down because there's no width to play it around. And one thing Atlanta United has done all season long, they're a type of team that likes to build from the back. Well, I'm not a fan of that in this game particularly. You know, you build from the back on a short field and you turn over the ball. Well, now you just put yourself in a really bad situation and it's a quick turnaround from a turnover to a goal. So I'd like to see us play a more direct style and try to push it up the field more. Maybe get the keep the ball in front of you, and it might be time to try to play a couple of balls over the top with our speed. I know it's small field, but if you can play a ball over the top and have a guy like Joseph or Tito run the ball down and get there first and just try to keep the ball in front of you. It might not be a game where you want as much possession as long as you're seeding the possession on their half of the field. Yeah, I mean, I think a couple things. I think you're right, but I don't think we need to abandon our style. So I'm going to disagree to an extent. I think that Miguel has proven he can drop deep when we need him. Miggy can drop deep. Nagby's proven he can drop deep. If we start Remedy, I I totally agree with your lineup, by the way, 100%. But I think this lineup would enable us to play Tata style. Tata, you need to come out with reckless abandon, dude. You've already said you're leaving. Okay, no feelings hurt. You're out of town. No matter what, what do you have to lose? We're a second-year team. We just choked away our first chance at a trophy. We get another one. How many teams can say that? So don't come out here and play weak, defensive, long ball. I say we tiki-taka, we pass the ball, we pass and move. It's the Atlanta United groove, and we attack the entire game, the entire 90 minutes. And if we come out losing 2-1, but we attack the whole game, I can go back to Mercedes-Benz a week later and say, we're going to come out of this. We believe. One thing tactically that would be our style, but it's something that we've kind of abandoned at points during the season or didn't look too well doing it, but it's that Atlanta high press. And we've, throughout our our career, the past two seasons, have scored a ton of goals by getting a, a turnover on their half of the field by pressing up the field a little bit higher, having Remedy or Lorenowitz in some cases or Nagby or Miguel picking the pocket of a defender in the uh, in right outside the final third and being able to thread a ball to Joseph Martinez or whoever else and get a quick goal like that. So I think we need to come out first half with a high press, high energy, see if we can sneak a goal, maybe even two within the first 15 minutes and really turn this game on its head. Yeah, I say we just come out guns blazing. I, I think we got nothing to lose. Like we've already proven that at the, at the end of the day, We're going to have to come out. We're going to have to attack. We can't sit back and expect to win a championship. We have to go. We have to get, we got to get the ball. We got to get it in the goal. No excuses. Our best players are healthy, or at least they're healthy enough. Like we have to drop all sense of reservation, fear. It has to be eliminated. Tata being second place his whole life. Well, he just had another second place finish in the Sporter Shield. Prove him wrong, Tata. What do you have to lose? Like, I'm just sick of this mentality. We don't have anything to lose now. We're going to a baseball field to play a stupid team that's only lost one game all year. Why not just go in and beat them 3-0? Why not just go in and attack the whole game, dominate the game, and show them that, that we, we mean business this playoffs? And so, Blake, in order to beat them 3-0 is one thing, maybe a, a little harp on and a key point that we got to give in practice leading up to this game, is better shots, better shot selection. Atlanta United, when they lose their games, they, they've lost six this year. It's all about shots. Maybe they've had a lot of shots, but they haven't got them on target. And so when they're facing these teams that they've lost, like Houston, Sporting Kansas City, New York Red Bulls, all of those, all of them were double-digit shots on both sides. But you're looking at the shot on goal versus shots off target. And typically the team that won had more shots on target and Atlanta United was just screaming shots but they weren't putting them on target and if they're not on target they don't have a chance at going in the goal yeah I mean that's pretty that's pretty good stat we've talked about stats a lot if you don't hit the target and it's probably well sometimes you get weird deflections yeah and then uh, hitting the post is not really hitting the target that's a shot off target and we were unlucky last week with hitting two post shots and we need to get those rebounds and sometimes those are by chance and sometimes weird deflections happen 
But if we can get more shots and put them on target, I, especially with a guy like Joseph Martinez, more times than not, that ball's going in the back of the net. Yeah, I mean, tactically, like I said, I, personally, I just want to see us come out with reckless abandon. I'm tired of this Jekyll and Hyde complex. I'm tired of one day we show up and look like we're world beaters. The next day we show up and look like our team's never even played together. I'm over it. It's, it's got to be thrown in the trash. We already choked one away. Who cares? No one's even, everyone's already kind of like, ah, well, it's Atlanta. Well, you know what, Atlanta? Prove them wrong. Just go out. There's nothing to lose here. We go out, we attack all day, all day attack. High pressure. That's my, that's my tactics. And that's wonderful will. tactics. Score more God goals pumped than the team. Up. God pumped up. Yeah, guys, it's going to be a great weekend. Go out, eat some chili at Chomp and Stomp on Saturday. Woo. If you're not going to be going to the game to New York, Go ahead and meet up with your best buds. Grab some Atlanta or Georgia, some local beers. Drink a bunch of them. Get rowdy. Get proud. Let's go out and do something Atlanta's never done and win a playoff game. That'd be cool. Let's do it. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you soon.